Hey, what's going on? Benji Kaiser here, and I recently sat down with Kev Nav, a motion graphic designer for the Atlanta Falcons, and we were talking about the best computers for motion graphics design. And I'm going to send you over to that video real quick, kind of hear his thoughts on the best computers. Uh, but before we head over there, if you've yet to subscribe to this channel, I highly recommend doing so. Put out videos daily, helping you pack a punch and build an audience with whatever media or form you're looking to communicate with. And as we're going through this video today, any of the gear or computers I mentioned, you can actually find in the description below. And also any related videos will be found in the YouTube cards above. If you have any comments or you recommend a computer for motion design, please comment below. I want to get y'all's input on what you recommend for motion design. After Kev finishes talking about these computers, I'm going to go ahead and explain the specs and the reasons why that the computers that he chose are good for motion graphics design, as well as give you some other options uh, if you're looking to get started in the motion graphics industry and you really want a solid computer to take you a long way. So let's jump on over right now to that content. So I, I work off an iMac. Okay. Like, like, so it's built, like, everything's like built into it. It's like the 4K monitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that stuff. Like, I think it's behind me somewhere. I don't know if you can see it, but somewhere back there. Okay. But that that's kind of what my, my main, like when I, I, I think that I would be able to do everything off of that machine. Okay. Hands down, I think, like, as long, because that's like powerful enough to have After Effects running. You know, it's powerful enough to do some video editing and Premiere. Yeah. yeah. You can run Photoshop completely fine. Illustrator runs like a champ. Cool. Like, I think, so I think on those guys, like, you can definitely do what you need to do. And I think everything past that, like, if you wanted to, you know, get, like, spend the ridiculous amount of money and get, like, the Mac trash cans. Yeah. Like, that's cool. Yeah. You know, I, we have one at work. I mean, kind of kind of up in the air, but I'm not, okay. like, a crazy big fan of it, to be honest with you. Okay. But I, do, I do have to admit, like, my iMac is, is a pretty powerful machine for the money that I spent on it. Cool. I think I want to spend, I spent more than like your average because this is like what we do. All right, so Kev was talking about the iMac and he was also talking about the Mac Pro. Now, these two computers are extremely powerful. The Mac Pro has 16 gigs of RAM, has six core processor in it, uh, and it usually has around 512 to two terabytes of memory, depending on the one that you get. Another cool thing about the Mac Pro is it has dual AMD Fire Pro D500 graphics processing units. Now this will give your computer a lot of speed with rendering time, with editing speeds, uh, with also exporting times. It'll decrease the, kind of the waiting periods for those things. So that is one thing that's very powerful about the Mac Pro. Uh, now it is a fairly expensive machine. That's the only thing that kind of holds me back from like fully diving on that machine. Um, but also, Kev talked about the iMac, and it's the 27-inch 5K iMac. Now, looking at that machine, you would think it'd have a lot of promising specs, but I was pretty surprised uh, looking at the iMac 27-inch 5K. It had an i5 processor, which isn't the latest and the greatest. It had 8 gigs of RAM, and it also has 2 terabytes of memory. So that is super helpful having a lot of memory, especially for editing video, you're gonna have really large files. But it surprised me that the RAM and the processor were of lower end, uh, not quality, but just power. Also in this computer, you have the Radeon 580, eight gig graphics processing unit. So that's a really good graphics processing unit. But honestly, what surprised me was the specs of the RAM and the processor that kind of turned me off to this computer. But like I've said, it's a good computer. Now let's look at some other ones that maybe relate to this uh, or maybe even are a little bit better. One that I'm super impressed by is this Skytech Supremacy. It has 32 gigs of RAM. It has the GTX 1080 graphics processing unit by NVIDIA also with a 500 gig solid state Samsung hard drive. Personally, I have that hard drive in my computer and it's super fast, I like it a lot. It also has an i7 processor and it's liquid cooled. So what that means is it's not gonna run those fans as much to try and cool it down. The liquid cooling will allow your machine to run faster, longer, so it won't wear out the machine as quickly, so that will help in the long run. you will be replacing your machine every couple of years because it won't wear out all those fans and parts as quickly, so that's fantastic. Also getting into some other machines like the Dell XPS Tower. This has 32 gigs of RAM, has the i7 processor. It's a GTX 1060 graphics processing unit by NVIDIA. And then also a one terabyte SATA 7200 RPM drive. So this computer is well suited uh, for motion graphics, for video editing, etc. 
And the final one I will mention is the Alienware Aurora R7. This is more on the budget side of things. I think this is actually the least expensive machine. It has an i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM. It boots up into a 256 gig solid state, and then it stores all of your files and videos and et cetera on a one terabyte SATA standard hard drive. Now the cool thing about that is it's going to split your applications and your running software onto the solid state to help it run faster and then you'll store all of your files on the SATA standard hard drive. That'll just pull the cost down which is one of the reasons this machine is more affordable. Another great benefit to this machine is it has the GTX 1070 graphics processing unit so it is definitely up to par for video editing and motion graphics and stuff like that so it's a great machine I hope this video has helped you hope Kev's input as well as kind of me explaining why those machines are, are powerful and good fit for motion graphics again with motion graphics you're dealing with a lot of rendering a lot of design exporting there's just a ton of work that the machine is doing in order to keep up with you I mean there's there's a lot going on when you're doing motion design and, and video editing primarily. Again, thank you for tuning in today. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the like button if this video has helped you at all. Comment below if you have a recommendation of a computer that you really like. My name is Benji Kaiser. Thanks for tuning in to this video today. I will see you here on the next episode.